Hey y'all, it is Shankisia with the Black Centrovert here to create a video on how I make my wax melts. This has been highly requested and I am happy to create a video that explains my process on how I make these long lasting wax melts that people are learning to love outside of the wax melts that are typically in clamshells. So to get started, this is my Presto pot, and I am using a coconut that I need to turn this to 200 degrees and above because it's a coconut wax. And this is the final product that we're aiming to make. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the wax that I use. I use C55, which is a coconut tart wax, a coconut wax with a tiny bit of paraffin, a uh, food grade paraffin and I feel like it works the best for me for my wax melts so this is me adding it to the presto pot it's gonna melt so it doesn't matter <laughs> how I put it in there because it's it, it's gonna melt it's gonna melt down um and you can see here I'm using the soy light uh presto pot uh, that I ordered from Etsy but yeah so I'm just placing this in the presto pot and waiting for it to melt so don't mind my janky um, pitcher or pouring pitcher. Um, I've been getting a lot of use out of this and of the scale, um, as you can tell. <laughs> but this is this is what I use to pour. And this is what I use to make the crumbles. So this is simply a pie um, aluminum pan from Dollar Tree. It was literally four for a dollar. So I get one of these and I use a spoon. Now this spoon I only use for wax melts. I only use for wax melts. Do not use this to eat with later. You're going to regret it. So anyway, this is me checking in on the temperature. As I mentioned, the coconut wax needs to be over 200 degrees. So it's not quite ready. But this is who I use when it comes to my fragrances. As you can see, this is all Midwest Fragrance Company. Highly recommend them. And here I am checking the temperature again. We are over 200 degrees. We're actually around 212 or 215. So we're good to go. So now I'm going to turn that Presto pot down a bit so I don't get too heated with my wax. And we're going to pour around 15 ounces of wax into the pouring pitcher um, since we only have a small container to use to make the crumbles. So waiting to get to close to 15. I think I go actually to 15 off of camera. But um, yes, pouring 15 ounces of the coconut tart wax into the pouring pitcher and then we're going to choose our fragrance which for today is toasted pumpkin spice and we are going to pour around 1.3 to 1.4 of the actual fragrance so that is around 10 percent of the fragrance i never go over 10 percent because it's not necessary and i typically start for two minutes two minutes until I pour into the container that I use to make the crumbles. So after the two minutes, we are now pouring slowly, slowly so you don't burn yourself <laughs> into the container so that we can get ready to start our process for the crumbles. And now since we have finished with the pouring of the wax and the fragrance sample, we are now starting to dye the wax. I always dye outside of the pitcher so I don't have to worry about the pitcher color. Um, and I use a simple bamboo stick to swirl the color around just to see if I like how the color is going to be once it finishes. Um, and I believe here I only added about three drops and I didn't like that it was still pretty light. I like you know, toasted pumpkin spice to be a bit darker. So after I finished um, kind of whisking it around to see what, what um, color it would be, I actually <laughs> went back in and was like, I need some more. <laughs> so um, I added about three more um, drops of orange uh, dye. And as I'm mixing it, I'm starting to see it uh, get a bit darker, which is what I actually prefer for toasted pumpkin spice. So we're going to give that a good mix and let that settle in and let it do its thing as it starts to solidify. 
So this is what I wanted to uh, show you all just, you know, once I'm starting to decide when I want to start mixing. So you're seeing that it starts to solidify a bit at the bottom. I personally wait until it solidifies at the top before I mess with it um, because then it's going to take longer. You can see I'm, I'm doing another batch over here that's fresh so you don't see the solidification at the bottom, but here you do see it. And then here's about after maybe 10 minutes that it's starting to solidify at the top. Not quite ready yet to start the mixing and the chopping and the stirring, but in just a few minutes, give it about five to 10 more minutes and you'll see that that top actually gets a bit uh, more solidified and that's when we wanna start mixing. So here it has sat for another five to 10 minutes and this is when we actually want to start mixing so compared to the other batch that i'm making at the bottom it's just solidified and you can start to see you know um, a bit around the edges where there's uh, where it started solidify at the top versus the one that we're currently working on where we're now getting ready to mix so just to show you a little bit of what that looks like i'm grabbing my spoon and going through it and there's like a gelatin substance type of thing going on that's how you know it's ready to mix. So um, since we're doing a small container, we're ready to go ahead and get started. I start by going on the outside of the edges and then moving in. Since the outside is cooler and it starts to solidify more on the outside than it does on the inside. So I'm bringing all of that in and I'm just chopping and stirring and chopping some more and just making sure I get the outside of that container um, getting the wax from the outside and pushing that in so it can all be together. Uh, the wax can all be together. So we're just going to do our thing here for about two minutes. And then once I get it all the way into the middle, I'm just going to wait a few minutes and then come back and start the process over again when it comes to chopping and stirring the mixture. And we are back. This is five minutes past the last time that we <laughs> were stirring and chopping. Just want to show you what it currently looks like. So um, you can see that it's hardening up a little bit. So it's time for us to go ahead and go back into it. Um, some of it is sticking to the spoon. So you can tell that it's starting to solidify a bit more. So we're just going to go in and you can, you can see how at the top, there's like a film as if it's starting to harden. And that is exactly what we're looking for. So now it kind of looks like pumpkin pie stuffing and, and whatnot. So uh, we are going to go in and we're going to chop and stir some more until it starts to harden a bit like um, maybe like a gravel type of um, texture. So just trying to show you all what that looks like up close. And you can see that it's clean where I took that wax, meaning it is starting to harden. So we're going to go back in and we're going to start chopping and stirring away. Just so y'all can see, <laughs> without me trying to hold the camera this is what it looks like when i'm going through the process so i'm typically mixing around and then i'm chopping and then i'm mixing again and stirring it's just a combination of all of those movements and remembering to grab from the outside so i try not to waste as as much wax as possible but yeah it's almost like cooking so you're, you're constantly stirring constantly checking to see how solid it's getting and there you can see I put up a bit chunk so it is starting to get where I need it to be when it comes to actually crumbling the wax all right so coming up I'm gonna speed it up a little bit <laughs> because I don't know if y'all want to see me crumbling all this stuff but I mean if you do you know you could you could still see it but Instead of making this about 15 minutes long, you know, 15 minutes of me chopping and stirring, just maybe it'll be three minutes. But, you know, I just want to make this video bearable for you all. So, yeah. Enjoy looking at me chopping and throwing wax, you know. <laughs> but I'm almost done. 
So I, I just wanted to speed this up. So here we are checking on that texture. You can tell it's getting harder by the minute. I'm not doing much more of stirring. I'm going in and chopping. So yeah, chopping. I'm <laughs> going real hard with that spoon, but chopping. Um, yeah, so I keep doing this until I get to the texture that I like. And then I typically let it sit for about five more minutes or until I feel that the actual container is starting to cool. Because at this point, since we did melt that wax to over 200 degrees, sometimes it is still warm because that's hot. Um, but as you can see how it's falling from the spoon, it is starting to get harder the way that we need it to be. Otherwise, if it was sticking to the spoon, it would still be too wet. And here you can actually see the final product of making the wax crumble. You can see that they have separated compared to the, <laughs> the other mixture I was making, but um, you can see here that they're starting to form on their own. And as I'm mixing, you can actually see that they're kind of like a rock or a pebble texture. They're, they're sh if you shake the container, they're gonna move. They're not as liquidy as before. These are actually solid wax crumbles. So you can see that they're falling off of the spoon effortlessly, which is what we need when it comes to crumbles. Don't want it sticking to your container or to your spoon. Um, so this is how you know it is ready. Now, I so yeah. That is the final product. These are my toasted pumpkin spice wax crumbles. I truly hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if it helps. Thank you for watching. And there you have it. That is my wax crumble tutorial. Of course, everybody does it different, but this is the way I do it. Thank you for tuning in. Hope this was helpful.